first of all, uh, tell us how you got involved with Rocket Man. Well, R Rocket Man came about from Matthew Vaughan, who is a producer, phoned me up and said, "Listen, I'm thinking about doing an Elton John biopic. Will you come in?" And he said, "You know, we, the idea is we want to do a sort of fancy musical where the songs tell a story." And you know, he said, "You know, you know, the music starts, everything explodes. Do you want to do it?" And I was like, "Yeah, that sounds cool." <laughs> so that's how I got involved in it. Um, yeah. That was basically it. I was signed up. <laughs> cool. And obviously, yeah, you I mean with your background in producing as well. I mean, it's just, it's. I think it's probably the, the right step to have someone of your calibre on on there as well. To, so, someone, you know, someone low someone grade. Of your calibre. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They couldn't get the better person. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what? And I think I think what it was is because I'd worked with Elton before, mm -hmm. and I worked with Matthew Vaughan because I worked on the Kings, Kingsman films before. Mm -hmm. There was a link between us, and then I met Dexter, and Dexter and I got on really, really well. Mm -hmm. And the two of us went to go and went to go and see Elton in Vegas. And sat nice. and talked. Yeah, that was dangerous. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, and then, two of us went to go see Elton in Vegas, and we talked about with Elton what we we're going to do. And it just seemed to be, it seemed to be an easy way of, you know, just, I don't mean, I don't mean the matter like sort of like falling in love. It's yeah. like you know, it was, it was a natural progression mm -hmm. and worked out well. Yeah, I was going to say, did you already know which songs you were going to use? Because it does feel like at times, you know, the, the songs actually do drive the the film as well. They drive the story. Yeah, and, and the song use was 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 kind of appealing for me because I mean they're in the script. So Lee Hall, who's, who wrote Billy Elliot, wrote a yeah. fantastic script, and a lot of the songs were, you know, or most of the songs were scripted as words in the film. <laughs> and though for me as a music director or music producer, I think I have to be called music producer, I then thought about how he would shape the music to fit the narrative, mm -hmm. opposed to thinking, let's do a new version of an Elton John song. It was more a question, okay, where does the music start in the script, and how does the song start, and and you steal ideas from people, that sort of stuff. But <laughs> that's the way I mean, I'll give you a good yeah. example is, is Bitch's Back Starts. Mm -hmm. And it's weird because, you know, Tara makes a speech, and I was actually thinking of Flash Gordon, where it goes <laughs> dum 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 yeah. from when I was a kid. Yeah. And so Bitch's Back kind of starts in that atonal way. Mm -hmm. um, slightly different, but, that, <laughs> yeah. but that's where, you, you know, you take these things and you go, okay, how do we get it? How do we get the script to come alive with the music? Yeah, and I was going to say as well because with the um, carnival scene, you take um, Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting, and you, you've got a bit of scar in there, and you've got some Indian influences as well. I mean, how did you get that influ uh, inspiration? Well, with Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting, we talked about the um, we talked about the hotbed of culture at the time in the mm -hmm. UK, and, and this and Elle's talked about this as well, and what you know what there is, and then you kind of have to be. It's that sort of thing. You go, okay, well, should we do a scar section? You go, oh really? Or <laughs> you know, and you end up you end up doing it, and it kind of works well. It kind of you know you get yeah. away with it. I think as a record, if you can listen to, I mean, there's a soundtrack, but if it was just a record of saying right, you go, what the has he lost his mind completely? <laughs> or the Indian section, which isn't really Indian section, it's kind of. It's kind of a '60s pastiche, yeah. of backwards guitars and stuff like yeah. that. Like the Beatles. Yeah, stuff yeah it's like, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's you know, it it, it just mm -hmm. you just want to. I think with a film, you want to kind of entertain some of the whole time. It's like you think about it's the only time they're gonna you you fill in your mind. It's the only time they're gonna hear this. So let's throw everything at it, and that's what you do to to make it work. Yeah, and obviously with Taron as well. I mean, how did you find? Working with him was especially in the say in the studio when you're putting the soundtrack together. Was is it easier working with an actor than it is with a with an artist? I think I mean to say that to, it's it's not it's it's easy work with an actor in some respects because they are they take direction really really well. Mm. The thing about Taron, he's actually a great singer. I mean, he's just a, he's he could be a recording artist if he wasn't such a good actor. So so it was you know. He was very easy to work with. Mm -hmm. It was just the amount of stuff we had. Still, I mean, we ended up recording twenty-six songs for the movie, which is a lot. Yeah. Of the, you know, if someone's acting and they're they have to be on set at four in the morning or five in the morning, and and I have to be on set too, and you're trying to get things, and people go, well, you know, have you finished this song? Well, when when are we going to finish it? <laughs> uh, we ended up recording, you know, a lot of stuff on set, some stuff in a trailer, you know, doing this and stuff. But he was just. You know, I, I can't imagine how this film would have worked without him or Dexter, but no. I can't imagine. Taron threw, you know, he was always available and always trying to make things better, and so, yeah, he was easy to work with. Yeah, I, I was also going to say as well, uh, was it actually quite surprising to hear Taron singing so well? And was it quite, considering you've known Elton since you were a kid as well, that he sounds very similar to him? 
it's a bit yeah, scary. I, <laughs> well, I, you know, I heard, I mean, my kids watch Sing, and I watch Sing too, which mm. I loved, by the way. And, I, and my wife goes, you know, because I I worked on the Kingsman films, but I hadn't met Taron. I just did these fight yeah. scenes for the Kingsman films. And I wasn't sure whether, uh, you know, my wife goes, that he's the monkey. And I was like, right. And then, and then I think when I met Tara in the studios, I said to him, I said, God, it's going to be a relief you're not having to wear a monkey suit to sing these songs, isn't it? And he, just, he went... <laughs> <laughs> but, but um, yeah, I, I think that he does sound like Elton uh, unless you compare the two together directly, in which case they're different. Yeah. But he sounds like Elton enough. And I think if he if he was doing a sort of stars and their eyes impersonation of Elton John, it wouldn't work because you wouldn't get you know great actors. What they do is they take their own emotions and they apply them to their role. Mm. And a great actor singing will take their own soulfulness, if they like, and apply that to the song. And I think that's what he does yeah. really, really well. He does. Um, and and lastly, obviously, there's um, again knowing Elton since you were young. Is that quite a daunting thing as well? You know, rearranging his life's work. What was his reaction when he heard your heard what you'd come up with? Well, he, I mean, he originally said when Dexter and I went to go visit him in Vegas. He and he and he said, "Listen, you know, I trust you both. You know, I'll come to the premiere. You know, it'll be great." And then he t he suddenly did a set visit where the one of the music editors working working for me was or working with me. He said. Uh, you know, Elton's got an hour and a half schedule for you to go through the songs. I'm like, <laughs> I haven't really done the thing yet. And and he was sitting there and he said, uh, and they said, what are you doing now? And he goes, you're now with Giles going through the songs. And he went, Giles? I went, well, I haven't really done the thing yet. He goes, listen, everyone, um, uh, I've heard Taron sing. He's absolutely brilliant. I completely trust Giles. I don't want to hear anything until it's done. I mean, that's it. And I was like, th I mean, I was, thank you. But at the same time, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. You know, what if he doesn't like it? And then he phoned me up. He phoned me up. Um, you know, after you'd heard the songs themselves in the film, and just goes, you know, I, I love it. I just want to say thank you so much. And I almost burst into floods of tears. I like, can imagine. Like, well, just the relief, to be honest. Yeah, with exactly. And yeah. actually, and I and I said to him, and I said to David Furnish, I went, that for me is the biggest. The fact that he's happy mm -hmm. with what I've done is more important than anything else, actually, because it's his music and it's his film. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.